Today's guest is Desmond Dunham, aka Coach Des. Um, he is a coach out in the Washington, D.C. area. He's a coach, mentor, and Under Armour coach ambassador. He has a book out called Running Against the Odds, My Journey to Making High School Sports History. And in this episode, he's talking about the coaching mentality, the coaching techniques that he uses to create so many champions. Um, it's so cool to hear his story as well, how he rose above the odds in his own life, becoming the man of his house at 11 years old, um, dealing with um, learning disabilities, dyslexia, and speech impediments, um, how he actually was turned down three times to be on his own teams um, in, in high school, and how he rose above that. Um, his mentality is awesome. Uh, it's I love hearing from active coaches who are in the trenches with athletes every single day, helping them rise above the mental challenges that we all experience. So yeah, he's just a breath of fresh air in the coaching world. I think you guys are going to love this episode. Here is Desmond Dunham. Before we jump into the show, I am extremely honored to share with you the sponsor of this podcast, and that is Rep Provisions. And I want to tell you a little bit about who they are, what they're about. They are a regenerative agriculture company. They are a ranch. I have been to the ranch myself. Incredible. And if you aren't familiar with regenerative agriculture. It is my extreme honor to introduce you. So here's a few statistics of why regenerative agriculture is important before I get into what it is. First of all, the United States is losing topsoil 10 times faster than it's replenishing it right now. And this comes from our modern conventional agriculture practices that we've really just developed in the last several decades. The way we are raising cattle and the way we are growing these monocrops of plants is depleting our topsoil at astronomical rates. And I love the way Eric Perner, the founder uh, and owner of Rep Provisions, the rancher there at the ranch, I love how he puts this. He says that our planet is just a giant rock spinning in space with a tiny layer of topsoil and subsoil that supports all life on the planet. Every economy, every nation is sustained by this layer of topsoil. It's really important, right? We don't have any soil or quality soil, health goes down and then eventually life goes away. Right. So it's, it's so important. Um, right now we're losing about 75 billion tons of topsoil every year, because as it erodes from these conventional farming practices, it goes into the waterways and then goes into the ocean and we lose it. So it's not sustainable, obviously, and we have to regenerate the topsoil. And this is where regenerative agriculture comes in. And the way they raise their animals is supportive of regeneration of the topsoil. So you can listen to my podcast episode with Eric Perner if you want to learn more about exactly how they do it. It's so important. Now, from a health perspective, this is so cool. Um, Eric just shared with me that they had their meat lab tested at Michigan State University. And if you're not familiar with omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, let me share this with you real quick. So omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. They're in all foods. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. So this is all foods have a certain ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Now the ideal is one-to-one, -one, right? So we balance out that pro-inflammatory aspect of food, which is important. It triggers a lot of things in our body, but we balance it with the anti-inflammatory effect. On average, Americans are 10 to one. Their omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is 10 to one because honestly, we eat so much canola oil and so many processed foods and all the way up to 30 to one and higher. It's super inflammatory, causes heart disease, cancer, all disease. Um, grain fed meat is on average five to one ratio or worse. And what came back from Michigan state university is that rep provisions meat has a one to one omega six to omega three ratio, which is freaking huge. Um, so, so cool. I'm so glad they found that out. And by the way, just FYI, grain fed chicken has a 15 to one ratio and seed oils are the worst like canola. Um, so we mean all these industrial seed oils, 70 to one or worse. And they estimate that 25% of the calories in the American diet come from canola oil. No wonder there's so much disease. No wonder everyone's so unhealthy. So just wanted to share that with you guys. This is not only an amazing way to support the planet, but also your own health. Um, and they're giving you guys an awesome discount. It's one of the highest discounts they offer 15% off anything with code coach Tara. So I'll link that in the show notes, or you can go to repprovisions.com anytime and just use the coupon code coach Tara and get 15% off. All right. So Desmond, we talked a little bit before we got started and I was telling you, you know, how 
so much of your path resonates with me because you've, you've been through hard things. You know, I can definitely resonate with childhood obstacles, but in a way how they kind of become our, a gift to us and pushing us along our path. Um, I, you know, I'm a huge fan of running. I think my audience knows that. And, uh, you know, I've, I've listened to you on some other podcasts and I, I love what you're talking about, like what you discovered in terms of how you felt inside when you started running and all that. But I want to start off, you know, I love the name of your book. (laughs) <laughs> running against the odds, your journey to making high school sports history. So can you tell us a little bit about the book, why you wrote it and what you're talking about running against the odds? Of course. Yes. And first of all, just thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it, Tara. And I love what you're doing and how you're Thanks. shaping and helping to mold some lives and to help people to reinvent themselves. And I think that's so powerful. Thank you. And And so, yes, uh, Running Against the Odds, uh, the impetus of the book was I just wanted to tell a story. I wanted to show my vulnerability where I've had a pretty successful coaching career. I've coached for over two decades. I have also taught for over two decades. And I've shared so many just powerful stories with my Mm -hmm. students as well as my athletes. And I'll never forget the one time when a young lady walked up to me after I gave a motivational talk. And they were so fired up and they were pumped up. And, and she said, you need to write a book. And <laughs> she was saying to me that, that other people need to hear your story. Other people outside of our team, they need to get this same inspiration that I'm getting today. And so I always had that seed planted in my head. And, you know, um, I went out for my high school cross country team and that ended up changing the entire trajectory of my, of my life. My high school track coach became uh, a father figure to me Mm. and running just, it was an escape for me and it was an outlet for me. And I didn't know the science behind it, but I didn't know about the endorphins and, Mm -hmm. and the serotonin and Mm -hmm. adrenaline and those things. But I knew that after I, I finished that run, that it would shed some some layers of stress and it would help me to cope with some things that I was coping with um, at a very early age. And Mm -hmm. so uh, fast forward, running against the odds is allowing me to to just share some very powerful lessons and to remind people that you're not alone when you're going through these tough times in life and that there is a way that you can maximize who you are and who you're capable of becoming. Mm. Do you mind sharing a little bit of what you were coping with, the the journey that led you into running? Oh yeah, so it started at an early age. I mean, early on, I really enjoyed school, but um, I did, I had a speech impediment. And so I was getting pulled out of class around second grade. And so of course, I wasn't the cool kid getting pulled out of class for, for speech therapy. And then I also have dyslexia. And so I began to have some challenges that my classmates and my counterparts didn't have or couldn't identify with. So there was this struggle with school. And then to add more to it, my dad was a Vietnam, um, he was a Vietnam soldier and and he was responsible for carrying bodies off of the battlefields. And so needless to say, when he came back home, he didn't have the, the mental therapy. And, and unfortunately, that led to him becoming an alcoholic. And that issue of him becoming an alcoholic led to abuse with my mother and some abuse with my sister and I. And so we were just dealing with a whole lot, you know, Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. your home is supposed to be your safe haven. It's supposed to be a place that you, you come, you, you, you reset for life and you Mm -hmm. get ready to take on your next challenges. Well, it's hard when you're going home and you have to sleep through those challenges. And, and so, I mean, again, it became running and other neighborhood sports that, that really, Um, became this escape for me. And I'm just so thankful that after being cut from three school teams that I went out for my freshman uh, high school, um, during my freshman year, I went out for my high school cross country team. And, and again, that, that just provided a a different platform for me that allowed me to, um, to really 
realize my inner strengths and who I am and who I was as a person. Yeah. It's, it's so fascinating when you look back at like a path of greatness and it's, I feel like it's always instigated by some crappy things, you know, some hard things that somebody had to go through. Right. Because otherwise there's no stimulus, you know, or not often it's, I, it's, and, 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 you know, I think, I thank you for sharing that because so many of us can relate to going through hard times. And, and in that moment, you feel like you're the only one going through anything oh, hard. Very, very low, super lonely. Yes. Yeah, right. Like you just feel like everybody else has this picture, perfect, normal, happy life full of sunshine and rainbows. What and I have you? dyslexia yeah. and I have a speech impediment and I have an abusive dad and my home life sucks. And it's, you know, when you share that and we get to see where your life has come now, <laughs> you know, it's like, Oh, yeah. okay. I'm maybe super, I, super, yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe I, this is part of my path for a reason, you know, and it, who knows, like I shared with you before, I'm, I'm totally throwing my daughter on the bus here, but I shared with you before we started, I was like, we got to talk about have kids who want to quit sports. Cause my, my daughter, <laughs> she did, she started cross country this year and she, she quit, you know, and that was, it was a little hard on me, but I'm like, I tried as much as I could to support her. I didn't want her to feel forced or something, you know, but um, I think, you know, part of it is like, she has a pretty cushy life. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. She didn't, yeah. it, it, maybe if cross country was a more pleasant place to be than home, maybe she wouldn't have quit, you know? So yeah, sometimes right. I think yeah. like those hard obstacles we have, they push us into our path a little bit more and look how beautiful it is in the long run of how many people you've been able to help all these kids, you know? And I know, like, I know you've had kids that have hard home lives. Like it's, it's actually pretty common, you know? And so to be able to have empathy for them, yeah. like, it's so beautiful how you were able able to, uh, take those challenges and turn them into putting yourself in a position to serve others, you know, and grow and find happiness yourself. Yeah, no, thank, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And yeah. you know, I, I do say that, um, I've always had this philosophy because I have, uh, two kids as well, 14 and 16. And, mm. and, um, and so we went through that one once before, where uh, my son wanted to quit his soccer team and my daughter wanted to quit there. Oh, but, give me advice, and, coach. Give me advice. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> what I what I ended up telling them was, okay, I, I actually identified with them. I, I knew what the challenges were. Mm. And yeah, you know, they, they live a pretty cushy life as well. Yeah. So, but I made it a life lesson to say, listen, if you start something, yep. you finish it. And I don't care if you don't ever go back to that team or sport, yeah. but you got to finish. And yeah. they looked at me so perplexed and, mm -hmm. and they thought that they were going to bail out of it. But I, you know, it was hard for me as a dad, but I had to stand my ground and say, you start something, you finish it. And mm -hmm. then you don't, you can find something else in my household. I don't care what you do. You have to do something else other mm -hmm. than school. Um, yeah. because we want to develop that well-rounded, you know, individual and, yeah. so, and it's hard because we, we sometimes can, can be that parent or coach or mentor where we forget about that adversity is, is actually healthy. Yeah. That you should have a, you should have a positive relationship with mm -hmm. adversity and failing and and unfortunately, we are seeing a, a, a major shift yeah. where we are, we, we have this negative relationship with failure and right. that, that, that shouldn't be the case. Oh, well said. I guess my daughter got, I, cause I am the same way. My son with football, sometimes he does not feel like doing football four <laughs> times a week, you know, and I'm like, uh, uh, you committed, you're going, you know? Um, but with her, she had a little loophole cause she hadn't actually signed up yet. She was just testing out the waters with the summer yeah. practice. Okay. Right. So okay. she, uh, she got okay. a little pass, but I, I'm hoping she'll, I'm hoping she'll push back into it because it's, it's also for teenagers. I think it's so vital that they have some sort of activity where they are getting those antidepressive effects of exercise. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm sure you see that like when your kids show up for practice and then how that, what their energy level is like after, do, do you notice, a, have you oh, noticed an impact yes. on the mental yes. health of your athletes? 100%. And I, I can always notice when, and I'm, I'm really, you talk a lot about intuition and yeah. I always have great intuition in terms mm -hmm. of the, the emotional temperature that mm. my athletes have, even my own kids. And, mm. and I can tell, I mean, when that emotional tank is low or depleted, 
I mean, it's very similar to a gas tank where you're just not going to function yeah. um, at your capability. But the one conversation that I have often is, hey, you, you, you have freedom, you, you are out here, you, you, you have your health. Let's use this as an opportunity. Let's use this as an outlet. Don't feel like this is something you need to do. Realize this is something that you're blessed to do. Yeah. And so I remind them of the opportunities that they have before them. And, and mm -hmm. a lot of times uh, they'll come up to me at the end of a practice or end of a run and they'll say, coach, thank you. I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is they, they, they're, they're around very positive people and their teammates mm -hmm. are super positive. So yeah. when you're having that bad day. I mean, it is so important to make sure you have the right circle of folks around you. You know, mm -hmm. energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It, it can only be transferred. And so if you got negative people around you, you, you have to, you got to do something different and, yeah. and you got to audit your circle. And, mm. and when you have those positive people, you want to take full advantage of that. And mm. you, by the end of that practice or interaction, you're just going to feel so much healthier because, mm -hmm. I mean, as we mentioned before, when you're having those hard times, you start to retreat a bit, you start to feel lonely and then, then when you have those right people around you to pick you up, then mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to feed off of that. You're going to get that yeah. energy. Yeah. I love that. And I love what you're saying of, you know, it's not a have to, Oh, I have to practice. It's I get to, I get yeah. to go to practice. I have two legs and I have right. this amazing community and I have this awesome coach and I have these friends and I, you know, exactly. once you shift into that gratitude yeah. and get yeah. to, you're in a whole different exactly. mental space. I love that you teach them that. Um, speaking of having a healthy relationship with adversity, I, we kind of skipped over this point, but you mentioned that you, you weren't able to, it wasn't just easy for you. It wasn't like you were just this superstar that was drafted into the middle school, high school teams. Like you were turned down, you were turned away. So can you walk yeah. us through your mental yeah. space? Yeah. On that? So, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I was dejected and, and I, I knew I wasn't one of those flashy, um, you know, kids that was mm. genetically uh, <laughs> gifted. And, yeah. and I mean, I, I just knew it. And so I knew I had to work harder. And what those setbacks did, it, it just started to change my entire DNA in terms of just becoming more grittier. And, yeah. and I'll never forget, and I'm kind of fast, fast forwarding, you know, and jumping around, but um, there's a race that I talk about in running against the odds where I go into this race and I think I'm going to be in the top 10 and I do all this preparation and I ended up in this dismal uh, 75th place mm. and I get this ribbon and and I end up throwing a ribbon in the mud and my coach saw me and he was furious and so Fast forward, um, he kind of paraphrased an African proverb where he said, you know, every morning a gazelle wakes up and it knows it must outrun the fastest lion. And every morning the sun comes up and the lion knows that it has to outrun one of the slowest gazelles. And, and either way it goes that I don't care how dejected you are right now, when that sun comes up tomorrow, you have to make a decision whether you're going to be the lion or the gazelle in life. That's up to you. And mm. that really, it took a little time, but it eventually resonated with me. And I ended up taking that ribbon and putting it next to my light switch. And mm. so every single day I looked at that disgusting ribbon <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I love and, it. And, and to this day, I know where the ribbon is. I don't even know where my trophies are, but wow. that, was, that was the springboard my mm. junior year in high school of what propelled me to become a division one scholarship recipient. It made me work so much yeah. harder. You know, yeah. I, you know, we, you talk again about intuition and knowing you got to make some of the right decisions. I knew I should have been making some different decisions, but yeah. that ribbon reminded me and every single day it made me make healthier decisions, eating, 
sleeping, mm-hmm. workouts, you know, and I was around a lot of chaos. And, and another challenge was the fact that Gary, Indiana, during that time um, of the late 80s and 90s was the homicide capital of the U.S. So we, we had a lot happening. The steel wow. industries started to go down. Unemployment went up. Crime went up. A lot of things went up. <laughs> and so it was, um, it was, again, the running that kept me uh, with the blinders on. And, mm-hmm. um, and it was some of those setbacks. But so being cut early, it just helped me being cut the speech impediment, the dyslexia, I had a chip on my shoulder. And so, um, and I'll never forget playing basketball with a buddy of mine and, and, and the ball is going out of bounds. And I mean, I'm literally, you know, like horizontal saving the basketball and, and I fall into all these chairs and, and I save it to my teammate. He makes the winning bucket and, and the, the guy looked at me, he's like, man, what is wrong with you? And I'm thinking to myself, like, what's wrong with you? Like, how do you not want to win? You know, and it's not all about winning, but it's about giving your best. At yeah. Everything. How you do anything is how you do everything. And yeah. that's the one thing that I learned from all those setbacks that I'm going hard in the paint with every single thing I do in life. <laughs> mm, yeah. I, you know, I saw somebody shared on Instagram the other day, a picture I really liked and I I'll paraphrase, but it was like a, there was a tree here's a cartoon. There's a tree and there was like a monkey, a lion, a zebra, an elephant and all sorts of things. And it was like, it, well, it was kind of knocking on public schools, but, but it's besides the point it was talking about, it was like, okay, here's the test. All of you climb up the tree here's an equal test for you. Right. And I look at that and I look in your life and it's, you know, you were kind of put in this box, right. Where you have dyslexia, you had dyslexia and a speech impediment, but it's like, no, don't be like that. Be like this, you know? And it, but it, what happened, I think from the, the kind of the wound of being like, you have to be a different way than you are when you had all these amazing like gifts and talents and all these things to share that didn't really get to be seen in that box. I think in, in some ways it can be such a gift because you were like, Oh no, I'm not living this life. I'm not living this life where like I feel down here and yeah. everybody else is up here. Like I'm not doing that. Yeah, I no, like yeah. I, <laughs> I, I I want what they have. <laughs> yeah, you're like I will do whatever it takes yeah. to live a life, uh, have a standard in life that I am happy with how I'm doing in life. You know, and that's kind of it's kind of the the hero's journey a little bit, right? Is coming out and being like, no, like I demand more for myself. Right. I will put yeah. in the work. I will change the food I eat. I will go to sleep earlier. I will do those things that kind of suck in the moment. Like I'd rather be flipping through Well, you didn't have a phone back then, but <laughs> I'd rather be watching TV late at yeah. night, you know, drifting off to bed and a nice, or I can do the hard thing and be like, no, I'm freaking going to sleep, you know? And that's like, that's the, that's the mindset of a champion is like, you become the champion way before yeah. the champion moment. You became a champion yeah. <laughs> when you put that 75th place ribbon next to your light switch. That's something a champion would do, you know, yeah. it's like, no, I demand more for myself. And that's, it's just so cool. I love your, your mindset on that. I like the way you put that. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. You have, you have to be willing to give up who you are for who you want to be. And and there's just nothing that, you know, can, um, compared to that, nothing, no way of going around that. Yep. Only yeah. through it. Yes. Very well said. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to let go of? Like scrolling through TikTok yeah. at night, like for you guys <laughs> listening, like, what right. do you want? Like, what do you need to let go of? There's going to be some yeah. things I got to go yeah. toxic relationships, yeah. toxic friendships. Yeah. What, you oh, know? Yeah. And the, the other thing is, um, in staying in your own lane in life where you're not just wanting what other people, what you're seeing on yeah. social media, because yeah. those things throw you for a hard loop and true you, you 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 start comparing yourself and and it's good to use competition to motivate you to right. bring out the best within you but at the end of the day it's about you it's not about yeah. them and right so we 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 run into that with just um competing um with my team and and other sports and and we also run into that in life where we healthy competition is great, mm-hmm. but it has to stay healthy. And it ha- you have to understand that it's all about you using competition to make the best version of yourself. And you want to mm-hmm. do that in such a healthy way. And so I know you, you're, you're, and it's very prevalent with social media now and, 
everyone's looking at what el- everyone else yeah. is doing and right. preparing and mm-hmm. you, you got you got to be happy with yourself and that's just so so important Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. I think, um, the biggest question I ask clients is why, right? Like, why do you want to, okay. You want to be a track star. Why you want to yeah. be super, super fit. Why? Oh, cause you saw that chick and you just emotionally decided you want to look like that chick. Why though? Why do you want to look like that? Oh, now we got some juice. Now we got some juice, you know? And, it, and so it's like, make sure those things that you're competing for or pushing towards is actually centered in yourself is what I'm hearing from you. Like, make sure like you want that, like that's important to you to become a track star, not just because your cousin's a track star and you want to freaking beat him, but you don't even right. care about track. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, okay. I feel like we would be like totally remiss to not get some coaching tips out of you. So I'm yeah. curious, you know, like with your, with your athletes, what are some of the the mindset obstacles that you see with them that you're able to, to coach them through? I don't know. I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but does anything come sure. to mind of like common mindset blocks that people have when it comes to running? Yeah. So I think that it is uh, where a lot of athletes, runners, um, totally forget about the fact that it's them against themselves and and it kind of goes to what we were just talking about where you want to make sure that you're trying to be better than who you were as a runner as a person yeah from the day before and ultimately your biggest competitor is yourself and so the most intimidating thing is when you go out for a team, you know, such as ours, we have a huge team. And if you're counting what number you are, it, it, it's going to be deflating. Mm-hmm. But when you say, and you, you, Hey, I've run 30 minutes in a 5k. My goal is to break 30 minutes. And mm-hmm. so start to set goals against yourself. And so I think that that goal setting is super important. And, and we start off our season with doing a vision board and mm, we, wow. You know, yeah. With that vision board, it's all about what do I want to accomplish from an athletic experience standpoint? Mm-hmm. Because we talk about the holistic experience. It's beyond just running, but so good. How, how does running equate to your life? Wow. And, wow. So yeah. Yeah. So, and I have to remind them that, hey, you're, you're not only out, are you out here to run, you're out here to be a, um, a better teammate. You're out here to inspire others. You know, what did you say to your teammate today that made them have mm. a better day? And so, so we, we, we have really gotten away from that as a society. And we always preach me, 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 and it should be we, 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 Mm, you know, the the community. And Mm -hmm. so I really get our runners to look at the bigger picture of having a family atmosphere, showing Mm -hmm. gratitude. And I always say this, look, our program is effort based. And I want you to always ask yourself, did you give your best effort? I love that. And so they know that that's something that they have control. So I'm mm-hmm. doing a lot of rewiring because yeah. most of our athletes come out and they think it's all about the scoreboard. Or right. Results based only. Results based only. And right. We, I, you know, I'm super competitive, but I know that if I get my athletes to enjoy the, the process, the yep. journey, yep. The, the destination will come as a byproduct. And Amen. So, um, so it becomes a much more enjoyable experience. We have our championships this weekend, mm. and we have target times and for everyone on the team. So mm. even if you are our absolute slowest runner, I don't like saying that, but for lack of better <laughs> words, slowest runner, you have a goal that if you make that goal, we're all celebrating, you know, yeah. and. You could very well take last place in the. I mean, some of my most tough athletes were junior varsity runners. They weren't super fast. You know, one that 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 I talk about quite often just had so much fight in her. I mean, she wasn't a gifted runner. Mm-hmm. She's now a Google executive, and so mm-hmm. and she's doing big things. And I, I'm not surprised because she fought yeah. every single day. And that's what I'm trying to make fighters. I'm trying to make our young folks 
more gritty. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting in their heads to let them know how tough they really are. And mm -hmm. they're kind of like, they're like, they're feeling this and they, they yeah. start to get into it. Like I am tough. I, I can, I can conquer myself. Mm -hmm. And, and when we start talking about having obstacles in life, it's about you not playing those mind tricks on yourself yeah. to turn a molehill into a mountain, but to become more solution oriented to understand that, Hey, I'm tough enough where I can come out of this and I can come out of this a better and a stronger person. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just it, it's, it starts with running, but it ends with the life lessons and success and I'm, I, as you can see, I get fired up. I'm, I'm so excited yeah. to coach. And <laughs> I'm, I, well, I just have to say, I'm so grateful there are coaches like you out there. So <laughs> I'll share a little. My, so my ex husband, we were married for 13 years and he, he works in schools. He's a school administrator, right? And so high school sports is like my life for over a decade. And, um, you know, he was often over athletics and he would say often, you know, he would get, not frustrated, but he would just mention that, you know, sometimes he would have coaches and I don't know why my mind always goes to football <laughs> on this one, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know, you, you have so many excellent coaches, but then you always kind of have a few of these coaches that are, they, they coach from a pressured place. It's you're not enough. You suck as you are and measure up or feel like crap about yourself. And he would often say, you know, I got to talk to these coaches. Cause like, he's like, most of these kids are not going to the NFL. Most of these kids are not even going to play in college. Like, this is it for them. This isn't really like, it's not a stepping stone. They don't need to have that much pressure. What the, what, what are they actually learning about life from this? And if they're walking away, having a takeaway of, I suck at football and I'm not enough. And no matter how hard I try, I'm never going to be there. Like, is that really what we want them to walk away from this experience with, you know? And so like, this is your mentality is also how I do my coaching. It's like, it's, it's, there's no pressure. You don't have to achieve these goals. I, I remind my clients of that often. You don't have to, that's a pressured place of I'm not enough unless I achieve that. It's like, no, like it's an empowered place. Like you, you're doing it because you want to, do you want to try? You want to see how yeah. it goes? Just give it all you got and see how yeah. it goes. And that's truly how I made it to the Boston marathon. Well, you know, I would run with a group of women and I would, that's they would say impressive. like, <laughs> <laughs> they would say like, okay, I have to get X time, you know? And I was like, they're like, what time, what time are you trying to get Tara? And I, I actually would just say, I don't freaking know. I'm just going to go as hard as I freaking can for as long as I can. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I eventually, yeah. you know, with that kind of um, tenacity, that effort of like, you know, I'd be on mile 21 and it's like, you you don't want to be looking back at mile 21 when you're sitting on the couch in an hour and wondering right. if you gave it your all right. let's, go, baby. Let's, let's go baby let's go, go. <laughs> it, you know and like that it's such a fun place to be because it's just you know you're you're pushing your own limits and exploring your own capacity as a yeah. human being from an empowered instead of a pressured place you know so i love 100%. that you teach your 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 athletes that um and i was going to say that you know it's so unfortunate that we have coaches and and even if all those guys are going to the nfl you know, they still have to become husbands, they have to become dads, they have to become um, mm -hmm. community members, right, and, and use their platform for good in this crazy world. And, and when you have someone yelling at you, day in and day out, I mean, what, what, and you're at a very impressionable age, right, you, you think that that's how I should operate in my relationships right. and operate in life. And, right. and, and so our coaches have to be super careful. Yeah. That, and it's so unfortunate. I mean, I see it all the time. I, I speak at coaching clinics and, and coaches are just shocked that I'm not a coach that, that, you know, beats my kids down and becomes this military sergeant and Mm -hmm. And not even with my own kids, you know, I, I play a lot of sports psychology. I, I, um, I get mm -hmm. them to want it for themselves, but, yes. but they, they never feel the pressure for me to right. have to do something. And, and it, it's, it's a lot of work. It's tricky, but yeah, right. at the end of the day, you want this to be what they want and not right. what we want. And I think you just hit on something so big because I think a lot of us, it, it kind of the easy way to motivate someone is shame. Right. And I've even caught myself as a parent with this. I noticed it one time when I was my nine-year-old, I think he was like eight, seven or something at the time, but 
I was, I noticed he had peed on my toilet seat. Okay. <laughs> this is my example. He had peed on my toilet seat and I found myself going, Micah, come here, you know? And I'm like, look, look at this. What is this? And what was I doing? I was using shame as a motivator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It worked. He, yeah. he cleaned all it all off. Yeah. Right. But I was using, I was like, what am I doing? I'm shaming him to get him to do what I want. So it technically works, but what is the dynamic? What has just happened inside of him? Now he feels small, you know, instead, could I have been like, Mike's, Mike's, Mike's. I'm like, dude, yeah. what is it? Like, yeah. what do you think we should yeah. do about this? Oh, yeah. I'll clean it up. You know, it didn't have to be this big shameful moment. And I think what I have seen, and it's, I, I do, I call it, uh, bad high school football coach syndrome on people's <laughs> self-talk because a lot of what you're saying here it, it, actually i believe that it 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 changes their internal self-talk because yeah. it's been modeled for them so much it's what are you doing do better get up stop being lazy you know and that becomes the self-talk and right. i was telling my clients this one time and one of my clients was you know she was exhibiting and she's like yeah i struggle with this a lot i'm super hard on myself and i was like yeah i call that bad high school football coach syndrome. And she's like, Oh my God, my dad was a high school football coach. <laughs> and I was oh, like, oh. there we go. <laughs> yeah. But you know, yeah. the, the, the crazy thing is that that's more of the norm than yeah. the exception to the rule in a right. lot of coaching, you know, and, right. and in other sports as well. And, and as again, as coaches, as parents, we have to ask ourselves at what expense will this cost us Mm -hmm. When we require this from our kid or our athlete, we can easily bully them to get what we need. Right. Now, what, what expense that comes out of this? And like you said, there's some long-term effects that are being yeah. planted, um, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. What do you do when you have an athlete that's being like just super hard on themselves to the point that it's almost decreasing performance? How do you manage an athlete like that? Oh, I, I get, I get a few of those every year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, again, I'm, I'm working on deprogramming them to yeah. look at the bigger picture and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I share a story in running against the odds where I was a bit down and out and depressed after my college and collegiate championships mm -hmm. where I ended up developing bronchitis and I was one of the favorites to to place extremely high and to help my team. And, mm. and I was basically diagnosed with this bronchitis two weeks before my championships. Oh, and wow. the doctor says, hey, that's it for you. Um, I'm gonna fast forward. And I ended up competing anyways. And <laughs> I ended up on the back of a, a of an ambulance on a stretcher. I ended up getting pneumonia. And wow. this is after I was training with hundred plus mile weeks. And wow. And that was the captain of the team. And, and I had this goal of being all conference, which I had never garnered that before. And so I went into a bit of a depression. And, yeah. and so I ended up traveling to South Africa um, a few months later and apartheid had just ended. And, and there were a lot of areas that suffered from apartheid we spent time in one of those areas, the Soweto townships. And I ended up seeing homes that were 300 square feet. There were homes that didn't have floors. They had dirt and gravel. Um, there were no organized sports. There were, I mean, the kids barely had a pair of shoes. Um, there was no running in the park or trails or community. And so all of these things that I had taken for granted and I was wired to think that that was the end all be all. Mm -hmm. And I was wired to think that I, who I was, I was identified as a runner instead of running as something that I'm blessed to do. Mm -hmm. And it is something that I'm able to do on a daily basis. And, mm -hmm. and I was taking that for granted. And so I mean, the moral of this story is the fact that we sometimes just forget about the bigger picture in life. Yeah. And so with those athletes that I get that are super wired, where this run and this practice and this meet is the end all be all. Yeah. I'm like, no, this is just the beginning. This, you know, until you're making changes in this world and your yeah. community and other people better around you. 
running doesn't mean anything. You know, wow. you're, you're trying to live your healthiest life because you being healthy allows you to help others. And so don't forget that we're put here as a community of people, healthy relationships and helping others is the ultimate, um, you know, sacrifice that another human being can make. And, and so I'm always building the bigger life lessons with, with those athletes. And, mm. and I have one now she, she's, she's competing extremely well, but it took, it took, I mean, almost five or six months to get her to, to take a little bit of that, that extra mm. steam off mm -hmm. of her and pressure off of herself. And, and so now instead of when she used to come to practice, it was about what she had to do. And now you can see her extending herself to her teammates. And, and because of that, it takes a lot of stress and attention off of herself. And, and, mm -hmm. and I just think that that when you get that community of energy, just, you know, bouncing and pinging off of one mm -hmm. another, then you, 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 you're, you're, you're just going to feel a more whole person. You're going to feel a lot better. And so, yeah, I just, I just always get my athletes to think about the bigger yeah. cause and the bigger picture. I love that. Yeah. Like it goes, we put so much pressure on ourselves. Yeah. You know, I, I was telling my clients the other day, I was taking Take, I was swapping dreams with them. I'm like, cause I have one, she wants to be a famous singer. And I'm like, so I'm telling one of my male clients, I'm like, what if I told you right now, you have to be a famous singer, you know? Cause she feels like she has to, she feels like, like, this is life or death. Like this is my freaking calling. It's all I want. There's so much pressure. And I'm like, what if I told you, you have to be a famous singer. He'd be like, no, like, I mean, you know, and so like we sometimes because we care about things so deeply, yeah. you know, we, we think that it's, it's, it's our, our entire value gets wrapped up into it. Yeah. And it's like, Hey, no, 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 no. I love what you're saying about like, that's just something you do. That's yeah. not who you are. And you get to, you don't have to. But if you right. want to, you can. Yeah, and when you, exactly. when you get yourself, I always like the visual I get, if you guys are watching YouTube is like, I'm like, or if not watching on YouTube, I'm like pushing down with my thumb. Like when we get this, like push yourself down, like you have to, you know, you're not enough. You have to be better. Like how can we perform at our highest capacity and that kind of energy when we're literally, literally just pushing ourselves down. So I, I mean, it's like such a it's gift. Not, it's not, yeah. It's not sustainable. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not sustainable. It, you it's know, exhausting. Point, yeah. 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 You're, you're like trying to just keep your head over above water instead of realizing like you can just float and you know you're just good yeah. <laughs> right here but you can yeah. start swimming if you want to yeah. um man i was thinking about like uh when you when you're working with these kids and you're doing these vision boards and things like that like have you have you noticed in them like a stronger leadership capacity because the way you're describing this like I, I tell my son who plays football um i'm like i don't i don't really care i don't care if you ever win a game ever all I care about is when things start not going your way, how do you manage that? Are you going to be one of those kids that takes his helmet off and like throws it on the ground? Cause you can't keep your head straight, right. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. or if the other team starts cursing and throwing out profanities, are you going to be the kid that starts trash talking back or are you gonna keep your head in the game? You know, like, oh, how do you yeah. handle it when you lose? And I've noticed, you know, like, I, I think he enjoys those conversations with me. And I know I've noticed that because we're talking about kind of bigger picture than just yeah. this win lose yeah. environment, I've noticed him kind of taking a leadership capacity out there on the, I'm not giving myself credit. I think it's just the, the talking about it has like brought it to mind for him. So I'll notice he'll go over to kid, another kid on the, you know, the other team and he has good sportsmanship. And so I'm curious, you know, like, do, are you seeing that in your, in your, uh, students and your athletes as a result is like this stronger leadership capacity, you know, what are, yeah. what have you observed in there? I think we're on the other end of the spectrum where everyone wants to be cool and everyone wants to be light. Mm, and mm, so it makes it mm. harder for them to hold their teammates accountable. Mm, and, but, right. but first of all, I want to give you credit because it starts with healthy conversations at home mm. that that becomes the, 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 the seeds planted for our, our stronger leaders. Mm. And so, you know, hats off, head off to you with, <laughs> with having those conversations with your son. And, and so we're, I'm finding it on the other end where it's, you know, our kids want to be the cool kids. They want to be yeah. liked by everyone. And, right. and so I, again, I have to get them to understand that if they want to be a part of a special program, it's, it's whatever 
they're willing to create. And that's one of my lines to them, that this is your program and whatever program that you want to be a part of, it's up to you to help to create that program mm. and giving them some ownership in it. And, and so I get them to reflect. I, I'll give them the question, look in the mirror tonight and ask yourself, what value do you add to our program? And they would have to come back um, with a written statement on whatever that value is. And then I also ask them the questions of, of uh, what type of atmosphere do you, an environment do you want to have within the team? And then are you adding to that environment? And it all starts to go back to accountability yeah. and um, or either leading by example or mm. extending yourself to your teammate. Huge. And so we, we start to, to, to develop those leadership qualities. And, and then by the end of the season, you can see that even if they don't have that positional title as the captain, and mm -hmm. I always tell them, hey, you can be the captain and still be a poor leader. So be careful right. with that. We, we know some we know some horrible bosses, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I always say to them, and because you don't have the title doesn't keep you from being a leader. Right. And so I, I, I give permission for anyone to step up and, and let them know that it's appropriate for you to step up and do the right thing and, and having that integrity and and, and developing that leadership capacity. So mm. we're, we're at the point now, we're at the end of the season and I'm super pleased with the amount of, of leaders that we've been able mm. to develop, but it's, it's challenging. And because yeah. we're just seeing this new turn where a lot of our kids, they don't wanna put themselves out there. Right. They're, they're afraid of the repercussions from their- right. Yeah, from their team. Yeah, years. I love that you they have you mentoring them. And that's such a good lesson, I think, for all of us. There is a huge difference between a label and a leader. Yeah. Everybody's had a bad boss. That's a label. <laughs> that is not leadership. <laughs> right. um, but you know, you then you have somebody else on the side that they're just like, there. And it's always I, I find true leaders are the ones that are more concerned with others than they are themselves. Right. Like, you know, how, how is everybody else doing here? Like, yeah. is ever you guys good? You know, just reaching out, caring, <laughs> asking yeah. questions, you know, yeah. it's like true leader leadership quality. And it's, yeah, I, you know, I have a 16 and 14 year old too. And it's, <laughs> it's definitely, especially, you know, my 14 year old, he's still in middle school here in Utah, middle school goes through ninth grade. And he is, yeah, he's in that phase of like, just kind of want, wants to passively receive everybody else kind of <laughs> liking him and, you know, being yeah. reaching out. And I'm like, no, you, you organize it. You right, lead out, right. you, <laughs> you make the friends like, and it's, it's, it brings so much more joy. And it, it goes for all of us as adults too. You know, it's like, don't sit there and twiddle your right. thumbs and feel like you don't have any friends, <laughs> like go to something, go to right. a conference yeah. or an event or something where there's like-minded people, like get out there, you know? Totally so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last question, because I am a little bit of a running nerd. And so are you, are you still actively coaching cross country and track or what, what are right. you? Yes. Okay. So I, I so, coach cross country, indoor and outdoor track. Mm, okay. I'm just curious. How fast are these kids running these days? Cause I, <laughs> it's so fast. Like what's a, yeah. what's a, you know, a, a, a typical time or maybe some of your fastest athletes, do you know, off the top of your head? Oh yeah. On, I on mean, some my, of the events. My okay. Fast, my fastest girl is attempting to run sub 18 so she wants to run 17 minutes and four or five K and my fastest wow. boy, my fastest boy, this is a great story because he was a junior varsity. He wasn't even one of our top junior varsity athletes his freshman year. And now as a senior, he's looking to run 15 minutes. And what? For, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we, I, I coach a pretty competitive program and, and yeah. so those are some of the top times and these, these kids can be, they can't, they have a shot to become all Americans. Yeah. I, I, I just want to watch them. I, I don't know about you, but <laughs> as like a coach and a, a body geek, like watching excellence and any sort of performance of physical excellence is just, <laughs> is the best. It doesn't matter if it's like street dancing to <laughs> right. football to running. It's just so I'm the, I'm cool. The same way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so cool to see athleticism at that level. That's, that's so fun. That makes me want to go to a freaking track meet. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Let's, let's close out by telling 
telling people where they can find you again, guys, the name of the book is running against the odds. My journey to making high school sports history, Desmond Dunham. And then where can they find you on social media or anywhere else? You'd okay, like? Yeah. You can find the book on Amazon. It's the number one new release. So I'm yeah. super excited about that. So um, they, awesome. Yes, They can find me on Instagram at coach Des D E Z Dunham. And I also have a website coach Des Dunham.com. And I also serve about a thousand kids during the summertime with kids elite sports and wow. it's a summer camp and it's a diversification of sports so you got to bring your kids tara i know um, i'm like where how right. do i find out yes, where's the, where right. we get info so your- it is uh www.kidseliteSports.com. and all right um and yeah we have four sites throughout the dmv area and so yeah we you can find me look me up yeah. How long does that camp go? Oh, it's all summer. It's all summer. summer. Yes. All right. Wow. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm Thank take you. you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hmm, we could go visit Virginia, visit home, say, oh, that That's sounds good. pretty yeah. awesome. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds hot though. A little bit hot in the summer. <laughs> oh, they'll be okay. You're yeah. making them real kid, you know, real, <laughs> real athletes out there. <laughs> They're going to be good and tired. We, they take an average of about 14,000 steps in a five hour period. So, wow. Uh, and it's all fun. I can guarantee mm. it is so much fun. So I bet um, I, yeah. And they're going to be good and tired when you pick them up. <laughs> oh man. Well, thank you. Thank you. First of all, for bringing your gifts to the table, to your athletes, but then also going the extra mile writing a book. I just finished writing a book myself. It's coming out in December. So I know it's an undertaking. <laughs> if, if you're out there listening and you're like, I'm going to write a book and you haven't done it yet. It's because it's a lot of freaking work and you're going to have to carve out some serious hours for it. I had no idea. (laughs) I mean, I felt like I was training for a 5K and Uh, got dumped into an ultra marathon. Yeah. (laughs) I had no idea what I mean. Perfectly said. Through it six, eight months. No, not at all. (laughs) Over a year for me too. This has been a long time in the making. So yeah, thank you for doing the work and getting your story out there and then coming on podcasts. I recognize it's a lot of work on top of all your, your regular job. (laughs) Uh, I've enjoyed this and I mean, iron sharpens iron. I, I learned a lot today and it was great. So Um, Me too. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.